My earliest memories are of gender dysphoria. I felt lost and at times like I couldn't survive. It took until I was 31 to publicly come out as a transgender woman. Nothing has been the same since. While on the road, I've met gender variant people from all walks of life, all at various points in their journeys. Hearing their stories and then being able to relate myself to it is what I need right now. You build it up in your head beforehand where you're like, okay, should I transition, should I not? I'm gonna transition, I'm gonna transition. And then you embrace that and you're following through with that and then you realize like, oh, well life's transition, everyone's in transition, that's just the way it is. I've been out as a trans person for about five years now and I've been medically transitioning for three or four. I've been in transition since 2005 and so, Nine years. And I've had the legal name change. I've gone about as far as I'm gonna go short of surgery, so I was redefining me. Isley was someone who, when I was leading up to transition, she had posted a timeline video on YouTube that documented her transition. I watched her video countless times, and it was really just a source of inspiration to me to see like visual evidence of the person she was and the person she became. Oftentimes, people will label it month one, month two, month three, and you can compare that to where you are, and then you look at yourself, and it gives you that source of confidence to be like, well, I can do that. Look at them, there's no way that I can't do that too. I look like two completely different people and I feel like, you know, then I felt like my life was a lie and now I feel like I'm being honest with myself and it feels amazing. She ended up writing me a message on Facebook and I was like, I know who you are. <laughs> you have to be friends with me. I felt like a real pressure at first where yeah. it was like, oh, now I've got to really speed up to be ready to be like out on tour and going up on stage, which was like insane pressure to live with. You can't rush it. You have to do your own pace and what you're comfortable with doing. As a transgender female in Florida, where I lived at the time, you have to see a psychotherapist for X amount of months before they'll give you a letter saying that you're mentally sane. And then you take that letter to an endocrinologist and then the endocrinologist has another final say as to whether or not they want to treat you and start you on hormones. Then once I was prescribed the HRT and given the prescription, you know, I started the next day. HRT is hormone replacement therapy. Depending on if you're a transgender male or a transgender female, you receive different hormones. If you're female, it's estrogen. If you're male, then it's testosterone. Testosterone does a lot. It's a very powerful thing. And like, that's literally all I have to take. And you know, I have facial hair and like my voice changed. My jaw started to change. My nose got bigger. My, I lost all my hair within the first year. I started hormones and my body adapted really fast. My body loved estrogen <laughs> to the point where I was producing a lot of estrogen on my own. Six, seven years into hormones, I went off estrogen completely for a year and my body still was producing estrogen as a biological woman would produce it. West Hollywood, there was a bookstore called The Different Light. And I went there and I found this transgender resource guide for male to female. And so I found this and I thought, that's me, but the reverse. But then I found this one thing with a hormone doctor in there. I called him up and I said who I am. And he said, I've never worked with a uh, female to male before and you'd be my first. And in a sense, you're gonna be my guinea pig. He said that to me and I took it on. And that's, that's how I found my hormone doctor. Basically, I had been self-medicating though. What do you mean? Like, like I'd been ordering uh, hormones online 
like eight months or so before I actually got in to see a doctor and do things proper. Some insurances are starting to cover the HRT and stuff like that, but it's just difficult to find doctors that are knowledgeable about the subject. I just started with Kaiser Insurance on um, beginning of May and it took me three doctors to find somebody who would be comfortable treating me just because I was trans. A lot of things about the way HRT is administered is really messed up. And again, it varies from state to state. So in Florida, as I said, I had to see a psychotherapist to get a letter to have an endocrinologist prescribe me HRT. In Chicago, where I live now, it's not like that. You don't need a letter, it's informed consent, meaning you can just go into a doctor, tell them, this is what I'm doing, so give me what I need. Before, like, when my body was full of testosterone, I didn't know what to do with those hormones. And having estrogen, I feel right. The most freeing part of my transition was not the hormones, but it was the top surgery. I think it's just this thing that always feels very feminine. Releasing that, it just became male for me. Where'd you get top surgery, done? Beverly Hills. They were so flexible with, because it was all, it was fundraising money. How did you do, get the fundraising money? Um, I did crowdfunding for a while and I raised enough for my deposit, which was a thousand bucks. How much was it, what like total? 8,500. 8,500. I work for a cosmetic brand. I created a product called Liptar that I could use as a way to fund surgery. The community that participated opened me up to a world of kindness in a weird way. It was kind of like, wow, people are willing to help when you ask for it even if it's something that they're never even gonna see or something they're never gonna be intimately involved with. I mean, it gave me immense hope for the world. I'm happy with my body now. Um, to me, to have bottom surgery doesn't matter because when I walk down the street, people don't know what I do or don't have below the belt. The top surgery was freeing, but when I came to the conclusion that I'm allowed to be okay with the fact that, you know, I have a vagina and that's totally okay. It does not make me any less male. It was like, whoa, the, the whole sky opened up for me. And then I realized we're being told by society and we're being told by even other trans men that if you don't get that, you're never gonna be a man. It is such a horrible message to give to somebody because really what you're saying is genitals make you who you are. Deprogram yourself because you've been taught that this is how you have to be to be this person. It's not true. It's not true. So one of the things I was most afraid about when I made the decision to come out as trans yeah. was that was that I was effectively making myself unfuckable and unattractive, you know? Which is a fucked up way to think and a scary thing to think about. Everyone needs love. We're all human, right? And all bodies are beautiful, be they sexual or transsexual or whatever. So this is a song about celebrating gender diversity. It's called True Trans Soul Rebel. It's like the only way I'm going to feel free is if I feel happy. My soul is free to be who it needs to be um, in the masculine body that I was born to be and I should have been born in. Every little change that I see in my body makes me feel more perfect for who I want to be, closer to the man that I want to be. I finally like feel like myself, you know. anything to do with being a transsexual. It has to do with being a human being. And it has to do with becoming who you are. And what it's taught me is becoming who I am freed me from everything. Freed me from the way people look at me, the way people react to me, the way people judge. Because people just do that. It's human nature. And I don't care. And when you look in the mirror now, what do you see? I did it. <laughs> that's, that's what I think. It's not like, you know, you're going to get a magic wand and to change out into this like dream vision or whatever you just become yourself I started asking myself well, would I be happier if I were a woman and I realized that I wasn't wrong there's nothing wrong with me I'm a trans person I'm not gonna pretend to be someone I'm not no longer you can classify someone as trans, genderqueer, whatever you want, but when it comes down to it, they're just people.